in a light of life through a void of darkness there lies a place all full of grey and it is at this very point where morality is finally born Limbus Hello everyone this is the Holy Hermit and today we're playing a video game called Limbo premiered a few years ago on all three platforms this game came out first in July 2010 on Xbox Live a year later it moved on to the PlayStation Network and PC. Even the smallest beings can make the biggest difference of them all and that is the whole centre point of the story. We have a character here, an unknown boy, no name, nothing. He wakes up in the middle of a forest, no idea where he is and he's there to find his sister. Without wasting his time the boy moves forward. He walks into the forest deeper and deeper and meets a spider. It's not any little tiny cute spider that you will imagine. It's a big spider who's there to take his life. And eventually that can happen. When a player is controlling this game you do die a lot. That is the whole idea of the game after all. But hey, this guy does not have any friend over there. Except for, well, death itself. Every time the guy dies he comes back to life. Now that could only mean one thing in the folklore we've come to know from our lives and all, that is, he's in the state of limbo, between life and death, so no matter what happens, he will come back to where he was. That is limbo for you. The boy moves on, moving through different quests, different areas, every time, different enemies, different encounters. He finally managed to get rid of the spider, you will see in the video of course, but hey, he does encounter a few people across the way. It's always good to have companionship. Especially if you're a young boy, you have no idea where you're going. The boy does find a few people, of course. No one there to help him. Everyone he encounters are there to kill him. You do find a few natives in there. They are not friendly natives after all. They also participate in setting tra traps for him, all trying to kill him. Throughout the game when you play it, they will end up killing you. But you are determined after all. You are there to finish the task, finish the quest, find your sister. And in the end, you perceive through all of these, you push through all of them, and you get to your goal. Looking at the gameplay aesthetic, the way the game looks like and all, it has again, almost a dark and dreary feel to it. There are no colour pellets, nothing. The game does look beautiful in its own way of course, but as far as graphics go, this isn't a big marble or anything is it? All you see is a little guy, a little character, almost a larger than life head. Well, he has two eyes, that's the only thing that you can see on him, his only features that glow. The background there is all black, and well, there's some light there after all, but what's, what's the most used colour in this game is grey, as in, it fits in well pro appropriately with the title, you are in limbo. Well, if light is a life where you live, darkness is where you're going, then this little region in the middle, well not little in this case I guess, is a place where this limbo lies. As they say, all the fifty shades of grey and so on, this takes that meaning to a whole new level, right? So here he is, boy, treading across this whole vast land, changing the environments do change from time and again, but his, resol his resolve is always steady, he always wants to get to where he does. He has no idea where he's going, mind you, but he does know he has to keep moving forward, he never stops. The way the game, game feels like, there is no soundtrack or anything, there are no fancy scores in this game, but what you do see is music every now and then, these loud noises, background noises, every time something happens, all the little creaks when you're walking through woodlands, when you step on a little twig, you'll hear all of that, all these big boulders rolling left and right, you'll be able to hear them as well. So all the background stuff is there, which almost sets a dark and dreary feel to the game, you're always on the edge of your seat. Your goal is to keep this boy alive as long as you can. Well, if that wasn't enough, the game offers you so many puzzles as you move along. This basically is a puzzle based game. It is an indie title after all. So you walk through this area, unless you are not running for your life, you are trying to get through a puzzle, trying to get to the next area, and it is this mixed feel of gameplay that keeps you always on the edge of your seat. You'll never be bored playing the game, you're always trying to survive or solve a very unconceivable unconce puzzle which you do end up solving in the end. So we look at the character again as I talked about his big head earlier. It has a quite significant feeling to the way we feel about the character. Well, face is where all the expressions come from, right? So to make larger bobbleheads is to, well, get in touch with the, with the viewer a little more. That's what all the cartoons do, well, back in the day they, they used to. 
that was the best way to communicate feeling the bigger the head I guess it's more lifelike I guess so that's what the boy is there for you he doesn't have well he just has those eyes big eyes of his which glow all the time he almost never blinks does he and when he does blink that's the only character interaction you see so far he doesn't get angry he doesn't get annoyed he just keeps moving on well you can control him and as far as controls go all he can do is hop around and grab a few objects he doesn't have any superpowers with him just a simple just a simple guy just a simple kid actually pushing through all of these perils well going back to the environment again of course as I said earlier this game is all based on these shades of grey which sets all a dreary feeling to the game and it fits with the title perfectly of course background does change from time to time as you move through areas but one thing always stays the same as in it's always foggy it's not clear what's in the background and that's exactly what the game's trying to show you your goal is alone to not to enter there but to move forward you have a task at hand and you want to accomplish it that's the whole idea of the game and it does talk a little bit about does it help us understand another philosophy of these game developers what they were after is more of a personal experience well, in all games we all have restarts and checkpoints, this game is no different after all. The idea was not to make a game difficult, but every time you do die, you do have the little feeling on you, simply because if you're playing any other game you do have this super powered character who's going around hitting people, maybe even killing them. And when you die, well, it's not really a big deal, is it? You just respawn, press the button again and there you are, back in the game. But with this guy, when this little fella dies, you always have the little painful pain feeling inside you. Quite unique, is it not? And the reason why I think it comes back, of course, is just him being a really little kid here with no superpowers of his own. He isn't going around shooting anyone. On the contrary, people are trying to stop him to where he's going. All but he is a determined fella trying to get to the end to meet his sister. And there are people who are stopping him. But there is nothing that's going to stop him now, is it? So you can interact with environments, well you can hold objects, you can drag them, pull them around and that's how you solve a puzzle. Now the puzzles are all physics based and at the end you do get to a point where puzzles are almost, well, not possible at the current technology so to speak, as in you have things that can shift gravity, there are other things, you have levers, big water channels, things like that. So yeah, the game does go to a mythological side, but hey we are in limbo so that's, you know, that's stretching the whole imagination to begin with, so there's nothing much of a big surprise there it's not a very long game it's not one of those nine or ten hours game but it is a puzzle game so it depends on how fast you can clear it there are no times as far as I can see there are no scro scores to keep just a little story and every time you start a game you can load from whichever checkpoint you've played so far that's limbo for you the game itself is one of the most inspiring games I personally ever had the privilege to play well he's just a little boy as I keep on saying again and again and everything is against him. All the creatures of the forest, all the traps itself, even the environment, they don't want him to proceed. The any, any help he actually tries to seek for, as in the human players in the game itself, they're against him as well. So there is absolutely no one there to help him, but he does have his resolve with him, and he sticks to that. He keeps moving forward, and well, moving forward, I guess, if anything you start, a journey that is, a journey is not a journey until it's finished, they must, it must always have an end to it well this game does show you an abrupt unique end to it and I'm not going to spoil it for you but hey it is again it stays true to the game itself the game's called Limbo and ex that's exactly how the end looks like well hanging in the middle that is but that doesn't mean it's so unique and satisfying it is a very good game after all I, I truly do recommend you all to try it if you haven't played it already this has been the Holy Hermit for you, and we played Limbo today, just a few levels of the game. I hope you liked the video. Subscribe if you will, I'll be making more of these videos of mine. I hope you all have a nice day ahead. I'm out now, thanks very much, bye.